Hello everybody, welcome back to DD159. DD159, it's our birthday! Congratulations! Happy birthday to DD! Happy birthday to DD! You say it's your birthday! Daily dictation! A one year birthday! Daily dictation! I have no cake. I'm sorry, Dee Dee. I have no cake, but in my heart, there's a cake for you. Our one year birthday! Yay! Thank you to so many of you who have listened to all the daily dictation videos. I appreciate it. Our family is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and I'm really happy. Unfortunately, I have kind of a sore throat for the past couple days, so I will not be able to say hello to our new subscribers again, but I have to do something. There's about 150 new subscribers I need to say hello to. But keep joining. Now, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, good. And Andre, thank you very much for the birthday wish. Now, DD159 will be easier than DD-158. Um, it's, it's another birthday. There's another birthday in America on September 6th, and we'll find out whose birthday it is. Not only DD, but somebody or something else. Now, we need to go back to DD-158, which was very tricky. The man who speaks, his name is Jorn Big Knudstorp. Jorn Big Knudstorp. He is the CEO of Legos. He is Danish. His English is great. His pronunciation is very good. But when a non native English speaker speaks English, sometimes it's really difficult to hear. But I'm thinking, if you're a German speaker, or a Danish speaker, or one of the Slavic languages, it might be a little bit easy to understand Jorn. I, I think, I'm not sure. But for so many of you, it was difficult. So I'll give you the answers in a minute, but I want you to listen one more time. The CEO of Legos, Jorn Vig Knudstorp. My pronunciation is bad. But it's the first time we've really on a global scale launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. Now when I hear him speak, I'm thinking the Terminator. He sounds like the Terminator. Yeah, I'll be back. Uh, but his pronunciation is fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. Uh, these were the answers. But it's the first time we've really, on a global scale, launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. Yeah, not easy. The most difficult word was that word. And it's a great business word. If you're a business person, if you're a business student, you need to know this word. Very good word. But it's the first time. No problem. But it's the first time. I'll use American pronunciation. But it's the first time. First time. This T connects. It's the, it's the but it's the, this makes the T a little bit weak, the S is strong, it's, no, it's perfect, but the faster we say it, is, is, but it's the, but it's the, and this S also makes this TH kind of weak, it's the perfect pronunciation, but natural American pronunciation, but it's the, but it's the, but it's the first time we've really, we've really, who's we? We, of course, is 
Legos, the Legos company. Legos. We, do you have Legos? I like Legos. But it's the first time we've really, on a global scale, on a global scale. So instead of on a global scale, we could change it and say internationally. 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 It's the first time we've really internationally, around the world, all over the world, on a global scale, launched a product. What does it mean to launch a product? Well, the word launch, we use it for like a rocket going to the moon. <laughs> launch something. But in business, we use it to mean to start selling something. So launched a product. It's the first time we've really started selling a product. Started selling a product. Another business expression. It's the first time we've really put on the market put on the market a product. Okay, so instead of launched we could say started selling or we could say put on the market. What did they put on the market? What did they start selling? What did they launch? A product. Of course, a product. Companies sell products. What kind of product? A product that was highly, very relevant suitable, appropriate, compatible. So instead of relevant, we can say suitable. Suitable. Appropriate. 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 We don't say appropriate. We say appropriate. It, it. Appropriate. Appropriate. What was the other one? Compatible. Compatible. So instead of relevant, we can say suitable, appropriate, compatible, two girls. Relevant, two girls. Suitable, two girls is okay. Appropriate, two girls. Appropriate, four girls. Compatible, four, two. Compatible with girls. Okay? Suitable, two. Suitable, four. Two and four. Uh, both of those work. So we have to be careful about the, the preposition also. So let me listen carefully, okay? L listen up. It's the first time we've launched a product that was highly suitable for girls. It's the first time we've launched a product that was very appropriate for girls. It's the first time we've started selling a product that was very compatible with girls. It's the same sentence. Do you understand? And once again, when we talk about Legos, it's a construction toy set. It's building cars and building buildings and, and stuff like that when I was young. But now they have Legos for girls. But if you look at the Legos, and we talk about stereotype, hmm, is Legos breaking stereotypes, or is Legos encouraging stereotypes? I think most of you agree, if you look at Legos toys, they seem to be encouraging stereotypes. But it's a business and from a business perspective you've got to make money. So what do little girls want? Do they want sports cars and army tanks and buildings or do they want nice colors and and tree houses and uh, kitchens and I don't know what else. So it's, it's a big debate. Do we, 
Do we push stereotypes or do we try to remove stereotypes? In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, <laughs> boys are boys and girls are girls. Not all, but most girls like similar things and most boys like similar things. Whether they're American boys and girls or Indian boys and girls or Danish boys and girls or boys and girls from Africa, South America, wherever, boys and girls are generally the same. Girls try to mimic their mother. Boys try to mimic their father. Mothers usually take care of things and they take care of babies, take care of the house, they usually cook. Fathers usually fix things, they're usually loud, they're usually driving, they're usually doing heavy work. So is it a stereotype? I, I don't think that it's necessarily a stereotype. It's who we are. I think the problem is when a woman wants to become a car mechanic, an auto mechanic. Oh, she can't be a car mechanic. She's a woman. Or when a guy wants to be a nurse. Oh, he can't be a nurse. That's a woman's job. He's a man. That's the problem. I think people can be whatever they want to be. You want to you're a guy, you want to be a nurse? That's great. You're a girl, you want to be a an auto mechanic? That's great. Fine. But stereotypes are only problems when we don't like the other person doing what somebody else does. A woman doing a guy's job, that's bad. That's a stereotype. But a woman in the kitchen, a woman taking care of a baby, that's not a stereotype. That's human nature. A man, and men can go to the kitchen, that's fine. That's totally fine. But if you say a man cannot go to the kitchen, that's a stereotype. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I hope so. It's a very controversial subject. In my opinion, I think Legos is doing a great job. <laughs> and for business, they're doing a brilliant job. So anyway, that's just my opinion, so don't be too angry. I hope I don't make anybody mad, but c'est la vie. Uh, such is life. Que sera, sera. Whatever it will be. Okay, let's read it together. Are you ready? Let's go slowly, just the black. Here we go. But it's the first time we've really, on a global scale, launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. Let's say it quicker, one more time. But it's the first time we've really, on a global scale, launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. And should I do Wisconsin accent? All right, here we go. This is from Wisconsin, Deep Woods, Wisconsin. <clears throat> but it's the first time we've really, on a global scale, launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. Yeah, Get her done! And I know, people from Wisconsin, if they see this, They'll, they'll, they'll want to shoot me. What are you doing? We don't talk like that. I'm teasing. Listen two more times. But it's the first time we've really on a global scale launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. But it's the first time we've really on a global scale launched a product that was highly relevant to girls. Once again, it is Daily Dictation's one year birthday. Yay! I'm very happy. I'm very proud. And uh, we've done very good. 365 days. We have 159 lessons. That's pretty good. Yeah? I think that's pretty good. I'm very happy. Uh, now, 
it's not just Daily Dictation's birthday, it's also another business's birthday. And I really like this business because when I was young, two of my uncles worked at this business. And I used to go to this business a lot when I was young. I miss this place. I want to go back. The name of the business of the company is a little bit tricky. Good luck. The name of the person who opened the company is Clarence Saunders. Boop, boop. Clarence Saunders. I'm giving you that. So I'm giving you one name, but the other name you have to get. Good luck on Daily Dictation 159. And once again, my throat is not 100%, so I will not be able to say hello to our new subscribers. But uh, remember, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will say hello in a separate video, maybe. And follow me on Twitter. Boop. Coach Shane, follow me on Twitter. Get a picture of this board so you can study. And also uh, get an audio recording. And uh, join the family. Keep updated. Thank you very much. Live lecture. Hopefully tomorrow night I will be feeling good enough and we'll have a live lecture. I'll be honest. In my free time, I'm sleeping. I don't want to get too sick. So please be patient. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have another live lecture. And if you can, join me. I'll send an invitation on Google Plus, so uh, don't worry. Join me on Google Plus, and you'll get the invitation. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Nineteen sixteen. Clarence Saunders opens the first self-service grocery store, the Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis, Tennessee. 1916. Clarence Saunders opens the first self-service grocery store, the Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis, Tennessee. 1916. Clarence Saunders opens the first self-service grocery store, the Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis, Tennessee. 1916. Clarence Saunders opens the first self-service grocery store, the Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis, Tennessee. 